Easter Sunday, the big day, the ultimate day for the whole calendar for Christianity, the day that Christ rose from the dead. I want to talk about the resurrection and two problems I have with the Quran concerning the resurrection. The Quran completely confuses Easter Sunday completely confuses the whole premise of substitutionary atonement, completely confuses why the resurrection is needed. And I'm going to go to four verses, 1 chapter 6 verse 164 and 1 chapter 53 verse 38. Both say very clearly that no one can take the sin of the other. And that's true. It's, it's very clear. Nobody can take the sin of the other. And every Muslim, whenever I talk about the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, they always throw that at me, say, no, no, the Quran is very clear that Jesus cannot take on our sin uh, because nobody can take on the death, uh, the sin of another, that uh, every sin is for themselves. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But what I, before we get into chapter 6, verse 164, and chapter 53, verse 38, I want to share with you two other verses, chapter 29, verse 12, and 13. This is the confusion that you see in the Quran. And I, I'm not sure how this confusion got there. It should have been pretty clear because those who wrote the Quran, they were surrounded by Christians. They were surrounded by Jews. Uh, the Quran we know was not written in Mecca Mech and Medina. That's pretty clear. It was written much further north in places like Damascus and Jerusalem and in places like Stesiphon, which later became Baghdad and uh, other areas of Jordan, Syria and Iraq. That's where the Quran was put together. And there should have been no problem with uh, whoever wrote the Quran or the group of people that wrote the Quran with understanding the need for atonement, the need for atoning the sin of another. And in chapter 29, verse 12, this is what it says, and I'll just read it here from uh, Hilali and Khan. And those who disbelieve say to those who believe, that's like us who disbelieve, they say, we say to the, those who believe, follow our way and we will verily bear your sins. So bear your sins is what we say, is what the Quran is saying. Uh, but the Quran then says, never will they bear anything of their sins. So no, this is impossible. Nobody can bear the sins of another. So here is, um, here is very clear in the Quran in verse 12 that People like us, Christians, say that others can bear their sins. And the Quran says very clearly, no, never will they bear anything of their sins. Never will you bear anything of other sins. Surely they are liars. That's verse 12. Look at verse 13. This continues on. And verily, they shall bear their own loads, so their own sins, and other loads or other sins besides their own. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That's just a contradiction. Do you see the contradiction? And this is something we've known. And I've used it before in uh, not only debating with Muslims and discussion with them, the Quran confuses. Can we bear other sin? No, we cannot in verse 12. Can we bear in the Yes, we can, according to verse 13. Unless, of course, they shall bear the other sins. Is this something to do with Christians and Christ Jews can bear the sins of others? Ooh. And that's exactly what this is saying. And if you look at the traditions, that's exactly where they're going with this. That's the first problem. So there's a contradiction here. And the way Muslims get out of it is say, no, the Christians and Jews can bear our sins. <laughs> We're always the fall guy. You can tell when they don't like something, they just throw things on us. Uh, but obviously, you can see whoever wrote this, uh, whoever wrote this chapter had a difficulty knowing really what, where it's going with this. But let's get back to the two classical verses. The two classical verses concerning the atonement, the idea of atoning for another, uh, which is what we know Jesus did for us. He atoned for us. And this idea that a man can take on our sins is anathema. And Muslims will always go to chapter 6, verse 164. So let's read chapter 6, verse 164. And it says this, Say, Shall I seek a Lord other than Allah while he is the Lord of all things? No person earns any sin except against himself only, and no bearer of burdens shall bear the burden of another. Did you get it? No bearer of burdens shall bear, bear the burden of others. Now, every Muslim that's ever read that to me, and they have, many Muslims have always quoted me on that, have said, see, none of us can take on another sin. Every sin is for themselves. Every sinner must bear the burden of their own sin, and that's why anybody, even Issa, cannot take on our sins. 
Let's, ch- let's see if this is the same in chapter 53, verse 38, the other classic verse about substitutionary uh, atonement or substitutionary, taking on sub- substituting yourself for another. And it's very similar. It says that no burdened person with sins shall bear the burden sins of another. Oh, hold on a minute. Shall we read that again? That no burdened person with sins, are you getting this? Shall bear the burden sins of another. And that's the same thing as chapter 6, 164. And this is what David Wood was getting at yesterday. And I think David, bless you, thank you for doing this and thank you for reminding us of this. The Quran actually in chapter 6, verse 164, in chapter 53, verse 38, actually gets it right. No burden of sin. Anybody who has sin already can bear, cannot, may not bear the sin of another. That is true, and we believe that. We know that. That's exactly what the Bible says. For all have sinned. All have sinned and are worthy of death. We are all sinful. Everyone is sinful. That's why none of us can bear our own burden, because the wages of sin is death. We all going, we're all going to hell, folks. Every one of us is going to hell, according to the Bible. It's very clear that nobody who is sinful can bear the sins of another. It has to be he who is sinless. Only those who do not are not burdened by sin. Only they can bear the sins of the other is the other way to say this. So who is the one that bears no sin? Well, the Quran answers that as well. In chapter 19, verse 19. Chapter 19, verse 19, here is Jibril, according to the traditions. He's come down. He's talking to Mary. Now, remember, Mary is the mother of Jesus. She is a virgin. And he's announcing this birth. And, of course, she's incredulous. She doesn't believe it. This is what the angel says. I am only a messenger from your Lord to announce to you the gift of a righteous son. Let me repeat that. Righteous son. What does righteous mean? Sinless. Without sin. Without burden. In other words, he he has... This son has no burden, and very clear in the Quran that Jesus is righteous. Jesus is sinless. So, therefore, chapter 6, verse 164, and chapter 53, verse 38, have nothing to do with Jesus. They're about me and you. We burdened. We are burdened with sin. We cannot take on the sin of another because we are already sinful. That's true. Chapter 6, 164, and chapter 53, verse 38, do admit that. But those who are without sin, and there's only one person in the history of mankind who's been without sin. The Quran gets it correct in chapter 19, verse 19. His name is Jesus. Therefore, dying on the cross on Friday makes all the sense in the world. He is the only one that could have come and taken on our sin because he is the only one that's sinless. Can you get it now, Muslims? Are you the, Even your Quran gets that part correct. The problem is they went and took him off the cross. The one person that could have saved him. The one person that could have taken on our sins. The only person in the history of mankind that could have taken on our sins. You threw that out in just one verse, chapter 4, verse 157. And and that's why you have no idea of what the gospel is about. The gospel is all about that. It's all about God, the sinless one. Only God is the sinless one. And only God taking on human form, which God can do. That's easy for him to do. He can take on any form. He took on the form of a bush, for heaven's sakes, in chapter 20 of your Quran. It's right there in your Quran. He was there in the burning bush talking to Moses. That was God. He called himself Allah. He told Moses to take off his shoes because he was on holy ground. Only where God is is their holy ground. Even your Quran admits that God was there at the burning bush. If he can take on the form of a bush, he can take on the form of a man. If the fact that the bush is on earth means that he had entered time and space in 1400 BC when he was talking to Moses, why are you having a problem with him doing it 2,000 years ago? Of course he can come to earth. Your Quran says he can come to earth. Would you stop getting confusing? If you're going to follow your Quran, then at least understand that little bit. But here God had to come to earth because it had to take a sinless one, someone who has no burden, someone who has no sin. Only that person can take away my sin. And that's exactly what God did when he came in the form of Jesus Christ. He was born at Christmas time. Died 33 years later. And that's what we're celebrating now. Whether it happens exactly on this day, we don't know the date exactly. What we do is we celebrate it here because this is the time that we believe 
that Jesus rose from the dead. And that's why today makes all the sense in the world. The fact that he rose again, the sinless one, the only one who is able to take on our sins, the sinless one who had no sin, who had no guilt whatsoever, and became guilty for us. What a God we have. Come on home, come on home. Come on home to that God. This is Jay, over and out.